All right, out here today with the guys, we're in central Ohio, taking back a nasty area of invasive species. This area was a field about 20 years ago. It was a wheat field was the last known thing that was cultivated out here. We're on this artificial levee to help with some flood control, but basically there was two big wheat fields that were right along this big creek. So this area got let go when it was a wheat field and it's just naturally grown back up. So what we're gonna be dealing with is species that just pioneered back in here. And a lot of it, especially here in central Ohio, probably 50 to 60% of it came back in non-native plants. This is a habitat project for us, but there's gonna be some long-term benefits of forestry and new trees being able to regenerate, new native plants being able to pop up. Yeah, so you'll find in these old field scenarios, you'll get a lot of uh, wind dispersed trees. So we've got ash, I think there's some cottonwood in here, some sycamore that probably came in on a flood. And then like Larry said, those are the more or less the pioneer trees. But then a lot of the shrubs that came in are non-native. Actually, I haven't been in here yet, but I'm assuming that most of them, if not all of them are non-native. Like Larry said, we're in here in a pretty suburban area. So there's a lot of landscaping plants that are what the birds are pooping in here. And uh, we're gonna go in today and try to knock that back and establish some native plants. So the plan for today, uh, we got the forestry mulcher out here and we have the dozer. First time we've had both pieces of equipment out here. So it's gonna be fun to kind of compare between both pieces of equipment. So on this levee, I'm gonna be pushing to the west here and Larry's gonna be pushing to the east uh, with the mulcher. I'm gonna perimeter everything. Larry's gonna push everything through the middle and then Ben's gonna follow up with some herbicide application from there. Yeah, so all these non-native species, like Kyle said, we're gonna be having to put herbicide onto those stumps. When Kyle rolls through, there'll be a little bit of a stump left. That's what we're gonna selectively go in with some dye and a backpack sprayer and very selectively put herbicide on those. The dozer, it'll basically just rip up the roots and all. So those ones we can just leave lie. That'll leave a little bit of structure that rabbits and birds can get into and actually utilize. So it'll be a really good diversity, but this area is so dense that we're gonna be counting on Kyle to basically open up access so we can even get the dozer in there to begin opening the area up a little bit more. All right, let's go. So Kyle and Larry are working hard behind me. You can hear the equipment running down the levee. I just want to look through some of these invasive species that we're taking out here. This is bush honeysuckle. It's incredibly common in Ohio. I believe this is the Amer species. There's a few different kinds of species of bush honeysuckle, um, but all of them are taking over this old field that we're working in today. So here's another one of the species that they're taking out today. This is called gallery pear or Bradford pear. It is actually this year, Ohio made it illegal to plant this in the state. But unfortunately, we've been doing it for the past couple decades and these suckers are spreading like wildfire, especially in central Ohio where there's been a lot of new houses getting developed. A lot of people plant those in the front yard. They don't necessarily know what that is. It's pretty in the spring and then it takes over a lot of our wild areas. This is an example of one of those wild areas. We're not totally sure what this was used for in the past, it's definitely turning into a forest right now. There's actually a lot of native trees. Got cottonwood down here. There's some box elder growing on the levee. There's also a little uh, honey locust here, sycamore down in this area. But essentially this is a riparian area. There's a creek down over here and it's pretty forested towards that creek. And then moving out into the old field, it's a lot more open. So the boys are hard at work behind me. I'm gonna keep strolling along and probably grab the herbicide and start spraying some stumps. Well, I've got the backpack sprayer on. I'm going through and following behind where Kyle has mulched some of these stumps. And he'd take a tree about that size. That's an ash, so he didn't do anything with it. But he'd take like a calorie pear. He'd just start at the top, basically just mulch it down to a stump. So what I'm doing is coming in, trying to follow behind him, trying to find the stump. So for example, here's a stump that Kyle left. I'm just trying to dab 50% glyphosate, 50% water, dab it onto the cambium layer. Some of these stumps are so ragged that I don't know that they'll take the herbicide, but we're trying either way. 
All right, getting back into an area now where the canopy actually is bush honeysuckle. You can see it up here, and you can see all the stems right there. Every bit of that is bush honeysuckle. So the dozer's gonna do a pretty good job of just knocking those whole shrubs out from the roots, and I'm gonna be pushing those into piles and working my way through little quadrants back here. I'm gonna get out and show you guys just how gnarly some of these honeysuckle are. So right here, this is bush honeysuckle. I know we basil sprayed this in the fall and that thing does not look hardly harmed. It definitely is missing a lot of its leaves, but that thing sprouted back out. So these right here, we're just gonna be digging those up, punching them out, putting them into brush piles. When you look around this area behind me here, all you can see in here, this is all honeysuckle. It's wasted acreage. So we're gonna reclaiming this. And right here, I'm gonna start knocking this stuff down. Again, pushing this into piles. So give you one more little look around at some of these honeysuckle. Another just huge one back there. But as far as the ecosystem, our native plants or native insects, they can't live in this. There is no habitat in here. So we are reclaiming this. We're gonna get sunlight back in here. This is a wetter site. So there's gonna be a huge flush of vegetation back in here that all different types of wildlife, insects, pollinators are gonna be able to utilize. So here we got an area that Kyle came through with the mulcher. You can see how there's just a bunch of mulched up debris. There's not a lot of debris like piled up in areas. What Larry's doing with that dozer is he's coming through and he's picking those root balls off of the honeysuckle, lifting it over, and he's trying to create these little brush piles. Actually, they're pretty large brush piles to give a little cover for wildlife in the meantime. You can already see on a sunny day like this, the honeysuckle starting to wilt. So it's gonna be easy to come through this afternoon and see what tipped up out of the ground and is not worth spraying and then leaves that are looking normal, obviously spray them. We're gonna come through today with foliar application and then we're gonna come in either today or some point in the future, spray a lot more of this smaller honeysuckle. There's not a lot of smaller calorie pear. Most of them are actually tree size already, but we're obviously gonna treat the stumps of those and if we see any small ones, blast them too. All right, it's been about three weeks since we were out here tearing it up, getting this place whipped into shape. It's looking way different and a lot better. Honestly, it's not even recognizable to see this area now, and that's really exciting. I just was out here walking around with a forester. We helped this landowner get a grant to help cost share this project, and we were taking a look at some of the things out here and getting his input on just the strategy going forward. This area is gonna get two treatments after this. The next one that we're gonna do, because we're going into the growing season, we have a lot of native plants popping up, we're going to stop all activity on this particular site. We're going to push that into mid-November. Here in Ohio, we get about our second hard frost right about the second week in November. Honeysuckle is bright green, and that's its weakness. So you can go in at that point once all the native plants go dormant and really just use any herbicide you want. Glyphosate's good. Uh, triclopyr, there's a couple other ones, and you can just foliar treat. Uh, you can also do injection method of using a hatchet and squirting into the big stems. So the other thing I'm out here doing today is I'm putting down native seed. The skid steer and the dozer both tore up a few spots and made some open bare, uh, bare spots on the site. So I'm going through all of those and I'm spreading this native seed here. This is about probably close to 30 different species. Lots of great species for pollinators, probably six or seven native grasses here. Um, those are gonna provide different types of forage for all different types of wildlife. The grasses are gonna provide great cover. There's also a seed component there for birds. This whole dam, this levee is kind of our unit boundary here where we first started the video. Well, you can kind of see now there's a lot of open real estate and I'll show you some of the spots where I'm adding this seed. All right, so I'm up on top of the levee. You can see down behind me all this bare soil. That's where there was invasives that a lot of those, the dozer pushed out. That's actually a great thing. Creates an awesome opportunity to go in and overseed. There's also several little dead patches. Ben, when he was rolling around on the four-wheeler spraying, he was using glyphosate. 
That was back a couple weeks ago when most of the native plants were still dormant. He killed a lot of honeysuckle. He killed a lot of non-native cool season grasses that were growing here. That made a lot of nice bare spots to add that native seed. So we're replacing the non-natives that we killed, going right in while the soil is open and bare and putting that native seed in. It's still nice and early. We're in the second week of May. So those plants are gonna have plenty of time to get up and start recolonizing this site. Long-term, we're gonna manage by foliar spraying in that dormant season. By dormant, I'm talking when the native stuff's dormant. This honeysuckle here in Ohio, it'll stay green almost into December sometime times. That's how we're going to maintain this from here. We did the first big push. It looks outstanding. We probably got 90% of the honeysuckle in the first unit, which was just under three acres. The whole area is about five acres. Right here is some more bare soil. You can see where the does are tore up a little bit. Perfect spot. We've already added native seed all over this. And by having native grasses in here, they're going to still keep a good ground cover. Since their root system is present, there's no bare soil where invasives can try to pop up because that's what happens here in Ohio. It's what happens a lot over all over the Midwest. When you have bare soil like this, you want to either get a cover crop on there of like oats or wheat or something like that but in this case I'm just doing a pretty heavy native seeding the landowners covering that cost of that seed so we're covering this whole thing with a lot of native seed so I'm gonna show you around some of the work area and just to kind of show you some of the differences believe it or not this area right behind me was a wheat field about 20 years ago and pretty much 100% of the understory filled in with bush honeysuckle all right guys I'm out in a part of the property that has not been treated and honestly this just hurts my soul to see this like this if you look on the ground in here there is zero herbaceous plants whatsoever nothing's flowering nothing's producing seed nothing's feeding wildlife this is the definition of a biological desert you can see all the bush honeysuckle that's this right here if you're not familiar with it this is from Asia you can see how dense it is in here now I'm going to show you an area directly adjacent to this where we've reclaimed and opened it back up and it's pretty drastic to say the least so here we go all right untreated is back to the left this way coming out into the area we've cleared so back in here we just had to get in here with the dozer it was so incredibly thick you almost could not get through it i mean it was a straight up jungle and the amount of sunlight that's getting in here now is just simply incredible all this open real estate again i've walked through here all this bare soil and seeded a ton of native species in here tons of native grasses tons of pollinator species and man just look at the opportunity for new growth to come up in here this is absolutely incredible anywhere that this honeysuckle gets in and is able to grow unchecked like this goes to essentially a zero wildlife benefit zero benefit to the ecosystem it starts to create a giant void might as well be a shopping center so right here you can see a giant honeysuckle this is the kind of stuff that was growing back here guys this whole root system you can see is intact i knocked that out with the dozer and pushed it over here and made strategic piles opened up some parts just to restore access and get some bare soil exposed so we can get some seed in here you can kind of see the size of some of these honeysuckles pretty much scary all right so i'm back in the woodland you can kind of see the spacing of the cherry trees that are mostly in this site but you can see all the honeysuckle ones like this right here that's what i pushed out with the dozer honeysuckle has a shallow root system i knocked that thing straight out if it created any kind of hole i just back bladed a little bit and pushed some soil back in to smooth that out overall it looks really good the spacing on the cherry tree is what allowed me to go in there with a dozer. So the bulldozer, although it does a great job getting those root systems out and getting that plant out and it's not going to re-sprout, it is creating a lot of soil disturbance. So all this bare soil in here, there's going to be a ton of honeysuckle seed. If you can picture decades of honeysuckle dropping seed and growing in here, this seedling layer, it's going to be a lot of just that, a lot of honeysuckle. Now we're going to get a great flush of native plants. And like I mentioned before, when I was out on the levee, we're going to only spray in that time of year when those native plants are going to go dormant after that frost. The honeysuckle seedlings are are going to be in here they'll be bright green and we can come in here and just hammer those so this particular area had the initial treatment and it's going to get two follow-up applications over the next couple years one's going to be this fall after the frost and then another one probably next year again in the fall most likely this particular project because it was funded by a grant that lifespan of this project is 10 years because we're in central ohio we know honeysuckle is going to come back here and in 10 years this landowner can sign back up for the same grant we'll be able to come out here and help him again and keep this healthy for a long time so it's super important to have a follow up plan like i mentioned the honeysuckle is going to come back but you can keep it under control and we're going to do it out here right here you can see a forestry mulch trail and on both sides you can see that layer of brown now there was one patch of honeysuckle we found back in here it was so thick we just couldn't see that little pocket so we're going to come back in we're gonna have to retreat that section there but overall in the whole area we got over i would say 90 to 95 percent of the honeysuckle totally eliminated so plants like this right here this iron weed there's tons of different native plants that are starting to come on in the understory they're going to start to be able to grow they're going to be able to flower and produce seed and get some more beneficial species out here for wildlife long term 
So this is a really cool little meadow. We call these pocket meadows. This was multiple years of knocking this out to keep this meadow open. The plants growing in these meadows, because they get adequate sunlight, they're able to flower, which is attracting insects, which feeds birds, and they're able to produce seed. They're able to just pump out vegetative biomass, and that feeds animals like deer that browse on it, as well as all different types of animals. So the whole ecosystem can really benefit from these little areas. But left unchecked, this thing canopied over with invasives, and that's really what's happening. Unfortunately, in our state here in Ohio, and in the next 100 years, that's probably going to be more and more common. You just have to do these types of projects if you want to be able to have sustainable timber or just keep your wildlife habitats out there and on the landscape. This used to be what we called a pocket meadow. It was getting closed up with trees, tons of invasives in here. And I came in here a couple years ago and started cutting down a few junkier trees that were just low value and unhealthy. Now it's turned into a really respectable meadow back here. And this is a super meaningful area to me. Last year, I was able to harvest a really nice white-tailed deer. So I was back here just in this woods about 75 yards and I was able to spot a really big rat coming through back here in this other side. Came into the back corner of this meadow, checked the meadow, looked in here. He was making a scrape, which is a communication tool for deer. I could tell he was scent checking and seeing what was back here. And I made one small grunt and he came in there to check and I was able to get a shot with my bow. And it was a huge deer. It ended up being like 200 plus pounds field dressed out. And it was the biggest buck I've ever got. But it was really cool to get him in this little meadow that we've been working on for all these years. All these native plants that are in here all over the ground, those are super high quality quality forage for deer. So I don't have to plant those. Nature's just out here doing its thing. We're allowing sunlight to get in here so that they can be productive. And that's what attracts the deer. These little openings also create a bit of a social factor. So it's neat to be able to go out and put in work into the habitat, into the landscape and see wildlife respond to it. But it goes so much deeper than deer. Deer are pretty easy. There's quail, there's pheasant in this area, rabbits, and we're trying to help all of that and just help the whole ecosystem. I mean, I love seeing these native plants that grow back in here and knowing that you are responsible for them even existing. And there's pollinators, there's insects that are rare and declining that all depend on these native plants. And it's really up to us at this point because we've screwed up the, the ecosystem so bad, it's really up to us to take care of it going forward. This stuff can be pretty difficult. It's taken us years to just learn to get these steps and which tools to use, but we feel like we're getting to a point we can do it pretty efficiently. And this was on a larger picture, just a large research project. We use a number of different techniques in here. So this is by far the worst invasives I've ever dealt with in Ohio. I've cut some big ones, but on a coverage and a size scope, this was the worst I've ever dealt with. And it feels really good to have that first section to 90%. I think the landowner's super happy. He came out, he said he couldn't even recognize where he was. I was getting lost in here and I hiked back all the time because this looks so different. So if you'd like to have us out to your property, jump on to nativelandscapesohio.com, get into the inquiry section, let us know where you're at, what you're dealing with or what you need help with. We'd love to help you out. If you're trying to learn more about this and want to soak up some more information, we got a little bit of stuff on our YouTube page. We're starting to grow that. We're also on Instagram, Native Landscapes Ohio. Check me out there. If you're looking for some more detailed information to learn more about this and how to manage woodlands and timber and the landscape where you live, especially if you're here in the Midwest, we just released our first ever online course that takes you through everything you need to know for woodland management. It takes you from year zero all the way to year four, which in Ohio, when you do a project, the following one, two, three, four years is when you're gonna see the most response. And usually about year three, four, or five, you need to just go back in and begin to do more management on the site again. If you wanna learn more about that, check out the course. We'll have the link in the description. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. This was a cool video. Been talking about doing this for a long time and us taking on this project for this landowner was the intention of creating this video to really show how you can take some of the worst landscapes that are out there and convert them back into something usable. This project's really just getting started. You'll see us back out here this fall. Thanks for watching. Again, we'll see you on another video here soon.